Hey, so today we're going to be talking about how to make good 3D printed snap fits and how we can avoid some of the major issues 3D printing causes for snap fits. But before we get started, I'd like to say thank you for the incredible amount of views my random 20 second video got on YouTube. Um, I actually just submitted it for a school project so I wasn't expecting anything like this. So thank you. So let's start with what is a snap fit. So this is a pretty simple drawing of the snap fit I made in the video. Um, most snap fits are gonna have two parts. Um, for this video, I'll call this left part the leg and this right part the slot. So in a snap fit, um, the basic premise is the leg is gonna bend into place and snap into the slot. So when this is all put together, um, this leg piece is gonna match the curvature of the slot and the hook is gonna hold it in place. So in order to do this, this leg actually has to bend a pretty significant amount in order to overcome this hump in the slot. So this snap fit is actually gonna end up looking like something like this during the process. So let's take a look at this bending motion in action. So this necessary bending actually makes 3D printing snap fits harder because unlike a solid piece of plastic, a 3D printed part is stronger in some directions than others. Let me explain. So let's take a look at this exaggerated 3D printed cube. As you know, 3D printed parts are performed by laying stacked layers of molten plastic to form your desired shape. In an ideal world, the layers are able to completely fuse together and form a solid piece of plastic. Unfortunately, that's really not the case. The residual heat of the newly extruded plastic and the stickiness of the molten plastic is what connects these layers. I'm going to call these layers the adhesion layers. And this adhesion between the layers is much weaker than the continuous strands of plastic that are laid down in a single layer. That means when a force is applied to a 3D current part, it will most likely fail based on how strong these bonds are between the layers instead of how strong the plastic is. But that doesn't mean 3D print parts are weak all around. So if we look at the three primary directions the forces can be applied, we'll see that this cube will be stronger in some directions. If we consider these two bottom forces, unless they are evenly distributed along the entire face and basically pushing the entire shape with an even force. The force is going to be concentrated on a small number of layers, effectively pushing that layer of this plastic cake off of the bottom layers. It'll sort of look like this, pushing off the top layers, and that'll be the break. If we look at the top force, we'll see that this direction kind of works kind of to squish the bottom layers so it doesn't carry the risk of the part breaking at the adhesion layers. So when printing your part, it's important to think about the types of forces it will be feeling when in use and orient your parts so the forces aren't acting in the same direction to shear your adhesion layers. So let's get into the three possible orientations we could have used for this nap fit. Um, so let's talk about what I believe is most likely the worst one um, in which the leg is pointing up. So the issue with this one is pretty easy to see. When this needs to bend, these layers aren't gonna be able to hold up. Um, so as it's bending into the slot, this will probably be where it breaks. Um, and even if by some miracle it does make it in, 
this hook is not going to be able to do a very good job of holding it in place. Um, because as if you were to pull, try to pull these two apart, this, the force will probably be concentrated at this adhesion layer and it, this whole head might snap off. So first option, this one is out, off the table. So let's take a look at our second option. And for some people that are more experienced with 3D printers, this may actually seem like the most inviting, more most 3D printer friendly orientation, uh, primarily because it would take the least amount of support material. And so less support material is always good because it reduces our plastic waste, but this also has some issues. Um, so because of the way these layers are built up, there, these are really at risk of shearing because of the direction of the bending. Um, where this becomes an issue is when this needs to be holding it together with this hook part. So in this force, the sideways force, this shear layer is going to be taking the brunt of this force. And like I said before, the uh, adhesion layers are the weakest. So in this situation, this would most likely break off. So this is off the table. And now for the third last option, um, might not be the most intuitive orientation for some to at first imagine, but hear me out. The way these layers are put together, it follows the profile of the hook. And for both of the sets of forces, the layers are at a risk of shearing, uh, primarily because the forces that are applied are evenly, going to be pretty much evenly spread out between across this hook, whole hook, which won't cause shearing when it bends and it won't cause shearing when it's trying to hold this together against the slot. So this sideways orientation ended up being the best for my specific snap fit design but this might not always be the case for your specific snap fit. Um, but you can take these same considerations of which direction am I making my leg bend? What direction should, would reduce my chances of shearing with the adhesion layers? Um, so if you take these considerations into mind, you can really circumvent some of the adhesion issues that you'll run into with 3D printers in most cases. So now that we're done talking about how to 3D print a good snap fit, let's talk about some basic snap fit design considerations. Um, the important thing to remember is that your snap fit needs to bend in order to snap into place. So the first thing to do is not to make your arm too thick. If your arm is too thick, you're gonna make it too stiff and it won't be able to bend. So a little thinner might be better for you. Next, don't make your hook too deep. This is all plays into the same principle of it. It needs to bend. So if you make your hook too deep, you're asking it, you're going to be asking it to bend too much a lot of times. And the more it bends, it might warp it and it might not be able to snap back. Lastly, uh, leave clearance space between the snap fit and its intended slot. Um, 3D printers aren't perfect, so give it a little bit of space and don't try to do a perfect match. It's not gonna turn out well. It end up, it'll probably end up being a little squished and you won't be able to get a perfect fit. If you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please leave a like below. And if you have any questions or have any comments on things I might've missed, don't be shy, leave a comment below. To end the video, here's some bonus footage for the lovely folks in my comment section for the snap video. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.